Hey, what's up guys? I have a very special interview to share with you today. Are you a player on the newer side to Destiny PvP? Maybe you've played Trials of Osiris a little bit, but you haven't yet made it to the Lighthouse. Or maybe you've struggled to get to that 3 win mark to get some Trials loot. Well, I have good news for you. I recorded a talk with my friend Lemur, where we covered many of the top mistakes that new or even experienced Destiny 2 players make when it comes to Trials of Osiris and overall higher level PvP. Lemur is a Trials machine. He does free trials help every weekend over on his Twitch stream, and in the process he's gone flawless almost 400 times. So I'm betting that you'll learn some pretty valuable things from him about winning in trials. This episode was really fun to record, and I hope you really enjoy it. I'd appreciate it if you take a second after watching this video to go check out Lemur's YouTube channel, and also go follow him on Twitch. In particular, if you have any interest in learning Warlock, he has an excellent guide teaching some of the advanced movement tricks for Top Tree Dawnblade. The background footage of this video is from Lemur, so you can watch him play. That's all for now, hope you enjoy the video. Alright, cool. So today we are here with my friend Lemur, who is a Trials Carry extraordinaire, uh, really great, <laughs> <laughs> great streamer, also a YouTuber. You got a couple videos on your channel, which is uh, awesome. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. In particular, uh, for any people who are interested in learning the Top Tree Dawnblade movement, you had a really good video that I always recommend uh, when people ask me how to do that, because I'm bad at it and you uh had a really good video <laughs> explaining it that i thought was like really concise and so definitely want to check out if you're interested in learning some advanced warlock tips um the topic i wanted to cover today is mostly uh related to trials so a lot of people who watch my videos um are you know maybe newer players or kind of experienced but haven't maybe had that uh magical run to get to the lighthouse and i thought that we could kind of riff on a lot of different tips uh to help people have more success whether it's getting your first card to three wins or going all the way to the lighthouse or anywhere in between so sound good mm -hmm. yeah absolutely for sure uh so let's start just give me a little background about um you know how you got into destiny and uh specifically you do so much uh, trial streaming um like how'd you get involved with uh you know doing all these trials carries what's the backstory on that yeah so personally for me i've played destiny you know since what i think it was like like february of like year one destiny one and I, I i came from halo too so you know that's kind of where i came from it's kind of had this big little like bungee attachment ever since i was a kid and um so i heard about destiny once it came out and i was super excited to play it and i got that's kind of just how i got into it but back in destiny one i was really just a pve guy i didn't really do a lot of pvp or anything like that until i really switched to pc in destiny 2 but i always wanted to be you know this kind of content creator um, kind of streamer like I always wanted to be like a high-end player you know someone that people can watch in crucible because I really did enjoy and play uh, really did enjoy playing pvp so for me that was kind of just always this this I guess thought I had ingrained in my head that whenever I switched to pc I would start streaming and then hopefully go from there so that's kind of just how I got into it so once once trials came out it was kind of like you know just the the obvious choice for me to you know to get into carries and that kind of stuff and then once i started doing it i realized how much fun it is and how much fun it is to kind of help people get there for the first time and it's fun for people to watch but it's also fun for me to do as well so yeah. um that's kind of how i got into it that's cool did you play a lot of trials in d1 or mostly more in d2 no you dude in d1 i was getting carried <laughs> oh really so you were yeah, you were the yeah. guy getting the raffles <laughs> yeah well I, actually actually i wasn't really i actually wasn't really big on twitch either until i started streaming okay. so i did so all these big names um you know like some maybe some bigger streamers like glad and he kind of blew up in d2 you know but some of these other players i didn't really know anything about until i I knew I knew about like Frostbolt, you know, some other YouTubers mm -hmm. who had some really big YouTube followings because I watched their videos. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, I didn't really know a lot of streamers. Okay. So until I started streaming myself and started kind of getting familiar with the platform, That's like cool. I never really went on Twitch. Yeah. So it was kind of crazy uh, when I first switched over. Yeah, I was um, kind of similar yeah. actually. I I I played a ton of D1, but I was more into like I played PvP and kind of followed more of like the sweat players who did like tournaments and stuff. But I didn't really like follow that many people until I kind of got more into trials and learned about that yeah. whole side of the community is pretty interesting yeah for sure no i uh yeah i like one of my a couple of buddies from high school i actually didn't really know that well but i knew they played destiny so i was like able to talk to them and they actually ended up carrying me like twice oh that's house. awesome it was funny yeah, yeah. that's cool um yeah, that's cool so obviously a lot of people haven't maybe put a lot of time into trials and they're kind of getting their feet wet and it's very intimidating as a newer mm -hmm. player because like there's obviously a lot of good players playing trials a lot of Recovs, cheaters, just you know, sure. stack teams. Uh, pretty tough to sometimes get those wins. What and and you do a lot of uh, carries on your channel when you um, stream. And so, mm -hmm. 
obviously as part of that you come across a lot of players who are maybe newer to it and are kind of getting their feet wet with it and i'm curious like if you had to distill like a top you know five to ten list of tips for things that you find new players make mistake wise that or you know pretty easy fixes that you can kind of give them some direction on how to play better and have more success what kind of things mm -hmm. would you start telling those types of players <clears throat> yeah so i think the biggest tip for me right now is i, I people always ask like how like, how do I get better at PvP? Like, what's the number one thing? I'm pretty sure you can agree with this too. Destiny is kind of a unique game where like aiming is is important, you know, just like every FPS, you know, aiming is always gonna be important. But in Destiny 2, there's so many abilities and so many, um, I guess, different ways to move and all that kind of stuff, different subclasses, um, all this kind of different jumps and everything like that, where movement is kind of a major factor in this game as, a, as opposed to uh, aiming. So having great aim is gonna be awesome. But I would say in Destiny, map awareness and movement is way more important um, than having, like, you know, the most cracked sniper shot or something like that. You know, so um, definitely the biggest mistake I would see is because, like, if you think of something like sniper rifles, right? Snipers are very oppressive in Destiny. They're they're they're, they're kind of hard to get used to once if you first start sniping initially, you know. But once you uh, once you get the hang of it, they can be really really strong. So. Um, in fact, they just nerfed them pretty hard, you know, last season, mm -hmm. you know, because the aim assist is a lot smaller now, but they're still, they're still really, really good. So I think one of the biggest things is people will just run out into lanes because they don't really know, they don't really know the maps, you know, so they'll, they don't really think about this, this lane being a sniper lane and they'll just get picked off. And then, you know, if that's, you know, if that's the first pick of the round, you know, not saying it's kind of like a guaranteed round for the other team. But it could be, especially if you're an, a newer team with less experienced players, you know, for the most part, and you're playing some experienced players. Um, if they get that first pick off, it's probably going to be, you know, they'll probably, you know, take control of the map and then probably take control of the round as well. So I yeah. would say learning, learning like the lanes and the maps are going to be super, super important. Because I mean, like I think about it for me too, like, you know, if they bring in a new map, right, for example, like let's say next season, you know, we get a new new uh, Crucible map or something like that, and let's say I didn't really get a chance to play on it as much, mm -hmm. I am going to feel way less confident playing on that map for Trials, like that weekend, if I if it was as opposed to something like Dead Cliffs or Jet oh, absolutely. or something like that, it's, you know what I mean? Map knowledge so, is yeah. huge, especially yeah, yeah. with sniping. One of the things that uh, I always recommend to people when they ask me how to get better at sniping is actually... It's, it's not so much about how good your aim is necessarily. It's like a lot of it's how good your map knowledge is so you know yeah. where to put your crosshair so that all you have to do is make a very minor adjustment and click instead of making some like wild Crazy flick, flick yeah. adjustment. It's like just no yeah. matter how good you are, your percentage of hitting those crazy shots is just not going to be nearly as high as if you already have your crosshair roughly in the right spot because you know the map really well and you know mm -hmm. what lanes are common to be watching for someone to pop into and you know, just have to take your shot. Yeah, 100%. And like along those lines too, um, you know, always people always ask me the same kind of questions, you know, how do I get better at sniping? And that's probably the number one thing I say is like crosshair placement is massive because in this game especially, like if you know the lanes, you already know where to pre-aim, you already know where that person is their head is going to be and all that kind of stuff that's probably one of the biggest advantages you can have in a game mode like trials mm -hmm. you know you know where the other team spawns if you know what the main lane is and you can already get there first and line up where the head's going to be like that's why top tree dawn is probably the best sniping class in destiny 2 right now because you can just get to lanes so fast with the acre stash and then you can just already be set up like hard scope in the lane you know where their head's going to be and then boom as soon as they peek out you just snipe them Absolutely. you know that, and that's yeah, and that's part of the part of the cool thing about trials and destiny is that once you get to a point, you can kind of um, I, you can kind of I don't want to say you can make the other players do what you want, but you can kind of predict what they're gonna do <laughs> and kind of like force them into a corner where you already know the next move they're gonna make. Yeah, and it's like so the chessboard yeah. almost. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah. it, it's really cool, and that's honestly how you kind of have to go into a lot of like maybe one v three situations, two v three situations, you know, where you have to clutch up or like one v ones even. You know, um, and honestly, that's that's kind of why that's kind of why a lot of people are mad about stasis because stasis is really like unpredictable. Yeah, you know? it's changed like, a yeah. lot of that. Yeah, yeah, meta. So, yeah that's yeah. absolutely. I think another point about Top Tree Dawn, uh, speaking to what you said, is that the ability to fly up in the air with the um, oh yeah, it, it's like it, it it changes one of the big variables, right? Where like usually you know where people are gonna be, but all of a sudden yep. this Dawn Blade can be floating literally anywhere and have like a crazy yep. off angle that you're just not expecting. Yeah, man, it's just, for sure. It's like a whole yeah. dynamic that you know, going into like map awareness. Usually part of map awareness is knowing almost certainly what angles to be worried about, and all of a sudden Top Tree Dawn like 
it's i hate playing top like three top two drones in, in stasis uh, or in, in trials yeah. i mean because like literally they'll just be floating anywhere and you know especially if they're good snipers it's just so unpredictable mm -hmm. sometimes yeah like dead cliffs alone i can name you like five like nasty spots that are just crazy for for top tree mm -hmm. on like this map is so good because it's not a, it's not a super big map right like there's pretty much like what maybe like two maybe three like main lanes for sniping mm -hmm. so like um and like if you just get in a weird angle you know what i mean and there and you can already see them like for example if you float right here and you float up top a lot of people like going off to the left here and so you can just already see them like they're going to be looking either like towards these stairs or they're going to be looking you know maybe towards maybe into this little window over here and so if you already just float up top here and you can just see them angle they're already like in the lane and they're not even expecting it it's just you have an entirely free maybe maybe like I don't know, maybe like a couple of free shots on someone if they don't even notice. Mm -hmm. So it's just super easy to see someone. Um, that's a big one. There, there's a lot on this map. There's a lot on Jav. A lot of the main like scrim maps, you know, where a lot of people play all the tournaments on and stuff like Endless Veil, you know, Jav, Dead Cliffs. Um, there are these major, you know, crazy lanes that top three dons can pull off because they're grenades um, and floating. And um, that's why it's like, I don't want to say you, you need to have a top three down sniper, but that's why a lot of teams do. Yeah, you know? it's so, very powerful for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's definitely crazy. Yeah, that's interesting. How have you felt the uh, impact of stasis so far in your trials, like carries when you're helping people out? Is it been <laughs> um, tough? Or? Honestly, honestly, it's a little bit of both. I was, I was at first. I thought I was going to be really annoyed, right? I was like, mm -hmm. oh, like stasis is going to ruin everything. And then I feel like once I really started using it, because I, I did switch to hunter stasis, you know, because of course the shatter dive glacial mm -hmm. nade combo is just crazy right now. <laughs> um, Pretty strong. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was like, I was like, oh man, like I feel like I need to use this, and it, to an extent, like that is correct. You know, you, you kind of I don't want to say you have to give in to stasis, but like mm -hmm. sometimes you do. I think it depends on the map for me. Like if it was like a map like endless, like okay, for example, Bannerfall, I didn't really see the impact of stasis. Um, as crazy as I thought I was going to mm -hmm. be. Like, I, people, I feel like if you were a top tree down on Bannerfall sniping, or if you were just any class sniping, you could have still you could have still performed pretty well on Bannerfall with Stasis. Um, however, on Javelin, it's a little bit smaller of a map, and if I feel like I, I, people were able to abuse Stasis a lot more. The, like, the lane, there were some big lanes, but they weren't as big as Bannerfall, right? So you kind of had to get up close and personal a lot of the time. Yeah. And that's where I felt... This past weekend was kind of annoying for me. I, I was felt like the okay. same way. It, yeah, se it seemed yeah. to me like um, Bannerfall played a little bit more of a rangy, pokey game because it's just a mm -hmm. big, you know bigger map, longer lanes. And mm -hmm. Javelin, it's much easier to close the gap on people and get up there and do a dunk. So it's just yeah, no, it's, exactly. It's like, much yeah. easier to like abuse the stasis abilities that with all the crowd yeah. control and stuff. And there's also like so many close like you know doorways and stuff that are like right around a corner. Whereas, yeah, like, I mean, you know, there, yeah. there are some on Bannerfall, but it's not quite the same. Like, there's a lot more open space, especially in the courtyard area where mm -hmm. most of the fights take place. Yeah, and, like, the biggest thing, too, was, like, this weekend alone, like, this just, it just shows how crazy powerful Hunter Stasis is. Or even Titan. Like, it's really just the, the fragment, you know, the Whisper of Fishers mm -hmm. that makes it crazy. Yep. Like, if they nerfed that and nerfed the range and damage on it, I think it would be pretty balanced. Me, too. Um, That's kind of what my yeah. take with it, too. I feel like the, yeah. that just having, having the ability to instantly shut down any super just yeah, by dunking dude, is, like, so a, crazy. I got to find you this clip. It was crazy. Like, it was there was a 1v3 situation where they had like two supers and it was like three four or something like that like it was a crazy round um and i was like the last guy alive and literally the only reason i survived was because like i hunter stasis shattered i glacial <laughs> nated the dark shredder and just yeah. one shot it and i was able to get out and i was like oh, this is man. just stupid you know what i mean like yeah, yeah it should not yeah it should not one shot supers and it shouldn't uh also, what's really annoying for me too is that the the shatter dive itself, like even if you just use it, it has a damage resistance, mm -hmm. right? It has it has that extra armor on it, which doesn't make any. A lot sense of people don't know me. that. Yeah, they don't realize yeah, that it has. Yeah, it yeah, actually no. is so powerful to get out it's, of situations yeah. with it. It's crazy, mm -hmm. and then like the super doesn't have any armor, but the shatter dive does. Yeah, so that, that, that just yeah yeah that that's the crazy part that's to me. Funny, um, uh, one of my recent videos, I like suggested some changes that i thought would balance stasis that was one of the things mm -hmm. i talked about and it's funny because a lot of people in the comments were talking about 
how they thought the super was super busted and i personally don't really like the super that much i feel like it's it's okay but i yeah. i feel like the neutral game of it is what makes it so crazy yeah no it's like a it's like a dawn blade kind of thing like top street on is has crazy neutral game has your grenade the melee is insane icarus dash of course is crazy mm -hmm. and the super isn't bad but it's also like like it's not yeah, the it's, best. it's not, like, it's it's not good, gonna like but... necessarily like win every game like you're, you can yeah, exactly. you can if you get good with it you can use it really effectively and it's certainly mm -hmm. like it's not a throwaway yeah, or anything a skill but, gap for sure yeah. yeah um so speaking of winning 1v3s and stuff what tips mm -hmm. would you give to players who are trying to get more comfortable winning like clutch situations like that because i think that's one thing that a lot of people start to freak out about when their one teammate goes down or a second teammate goes down and all of a sudden yeah. it's like they feel like the, the round's just over whereas like good players actually have a habit of like turning those around i, I noticed a lot of good players will for example like turn it into situations of like winning three 1v1s for example with good movement what types mm -hmm. of uh like what are your thoughts on winning clutch situations and just you know kind of being that anchor of your team um dude honestly i would say the biggest thing that a lot of people don't really think about is like they'll, let's say it's like a 1v1 and a lot of people just will just like be like okay i gotta get the final kill so they'll just like run in with like a shotgun or something like that mm -hmm. you know what i mean and um and they'll just run in and they'll just end up dying because the other guy will just sit back and primary so i think the biggest thing um when it comes to winning any sort of situation is just to play it slow um, I would say for me, that's, that's the way I play. At least th there are some benefits of playing fast and, you know, you know, rushing in and that kind of stuff. But it, when a game of like trials and when you have something, um, I guess as uh, what's the word as unpredictable as stasis, you know, you never, for me personally, I never really want to just like play super fast and run in if it's like a one V three or even a one V one situation, mm -hmm. you know, cause if I'm like top tree down hunter, right. Or as top tree down uh, warlock and there's a special, uh, a stasis hunter. And he has, and I don't, I don't know if he has a grenade or not, you know, and if I just try to go in for the, the shotgun kill, cause I could be a better shotgun than the guy, um, he could just throw a nade at the ground and smash it and just kill me and the round would be over. You know what I mean? So you can, you kind of have to play around all these different, um, these different abilities that your opponent might have, and you kind of have to keep them all in your head. So I would say the best way to win really any 1v1 situation is it, obviously it's going to depend, you know, it's going to vary. Uh, but for me, primary is the biggest thing. So if you can primary or out primary your opponent, like a lot of like a lot of people in this game, you know, they they try to become the best snipers or the best shotgunners. But really, the best players, in my opinion, have like a really really good primary shot. Oh, you know, I totally be, agree with that. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, think it's a very undervalued skill in general. Like mm -hmm. just because the yeah. the shotguns and snipers and like abilities are like kind of people think of as like the playmaking ability you know because like obviously if you you can pull off a crazy like 1v3 situation with a sniper if you hit a bunch of headshots but like i think that the primary gun skill is like very undervalued in destiny mm -hmm. unfortunately yeah and what's crazy is because they're like the, i think personally like i think the sandbox right now has been in one of the best spots it's been in a while like in terms of weapons like obviously mm -hmm. stasis is is whack i <laughs> we'll agree figure for that out later. Yeah, weapon yeah, balance yeah. i totally yeah, agree i think it's the yeah. best in the history of destiny mm -hmm. actually it's so yeah, good right now 120s right now are crazy so if you can play some primary with 120s like it is it, like that would be really solid mm -hmm. you know especially in a 1v1 situation is they're so strong and honestly i think they i i personally think they need a little bit of a of range nerf but other than that i think they're like you can hit 90s from like across the map <laughs> yeah, so I have, it's, yeah it's crazy. i have a criminal's <laughs> dagger with opening shot and range finder that literally is 52 damage 52 meters before it hits damage fall off it's like yeah, a it's, sniper it's rifle. crazy man <laughs> it's so crazy. and like um yeah no so especially with how and that goes into another tactic you know a lot of people are like how do i um like what's a good way to you know get past a certain number of wins like we keep playing really good teams and if you look mm -hmm. at really good teams a lot of what these really good teams what they do is they just they just kind of stick together and just team shot with 120s because yeah. like, that's how crazy they are you know that's a really good tactic now is to just you know uh, kind of hang with your team don't split off on your own and really just you know just take the head off of him when you see first with a 120 like it's crazy you know how, how crazy impressive these things are mm -hmm. so um especially so going back to 1v1s um yeah, so primary is great. And then again, if you you got to look at what you have in your arsenal when, when that situation arises. So um, if you are 
you know, a, a stasis hunter and you have a grenade, that's a great way to win a 1v1. <laughs> is, is it, you know, it's it's pretty easy. It's pretty know, much it's, a guaranteed you know, win. In yeah, that's, yeah, I would say it's like the best and, shotgun in the game. <laughs> it's like an yeah, AoE exactly. <laughs> shotgun. And then you have to keep in mind, you know, if you're playing a really, really good player, they're going to know that you're probably going to use your grenade yeah. to kill them. You know, so you're going to have to keep in mind, okay, they're probably going to try to bait me out and that kind of stuff. So you're going to have to think in your head, okay, how can I play around that? You know, they're trying to play around me. How do I play around them? Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. So um, those are all kind of things you have to consider. Um, you know, what abilities do I have? How much ammo do I have? Um, where where are they on the map? You know, are they close? Are they far? A lot of different stuff um, kind of goes into how do I handle this 1v1 or even a 1v2 or 1v3, yeah. you know? So what yeah, about what, um, what about so okay so one of the common situations that comes up is people will get their super you know maybe like on round three four five whatever and mm -hmm. some i feel like a lot of people are unsure of like when the best time to use it is like do you sit on your super and wait until you know you have like a perfect opportunity for a team wipe or do you use it like the soon as you get it to maybe you get a, another one back um do you wait to like use your super to counter another super like, what are your thoughts on that, generally speaking, if, um, you know, for people who are kind of not sure when the best time to use this? Because I think a lot of people put a lot of pressure on, like, getting the mm -hmm. most out of their super, which is, you know, of course you want to get the most out of it possible, yep. but what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so a lot of that is going to vary, right, for super to super. And mm -hmm. a, a lot of times when I carry, right, a lot of the carries will, like, think that, you know, let's say the carry is running Spectral Blades or something like that. They're thinking, okay, I got to, like, go wipe the team. It's, it's my super. It's what I have to do. Honestly, dude, a lot of the times supers are just great distractions. And a lot of the times um, what I'll do is the carry will just pop the super and kind of just like run at the team, you know what <laughs> I mean? Or kind of just like run around, you know, trying to like just basically just, you know, stir up some chaos. And then me, whoever I'm carrying with, but can just kind of play around the people running away and just get easy picks, mm -hmm. you know? So it's kind of like you can use supers for a lot more than just kills, you know? So Absolutely. that's one of the biggest thing too. And so if you're playing with a team, you know, you could be like, okay, I'm going to go right with my super. You guys go left. Um, and then they're probably going to be running away from the guy on right and coming to the guys on left. You can just team shot them as they're running away. And then if they somehow do end up killing the guys, you know, you have the super behind them, you know, to, to clean up something like that. So um, that's a really good way to play. But OK, so I think the biggest thing, though, too, is um, like you said, knowing when to pop. So I would say for me, it's going to depend on the team, right? If the team is really, really good, then I'm probably going to try to play really smart with my super. Um Generally, if it's a really close game, you know, supers are a hot commodity. You know what I mean? You don't want to just go around wasting it. You know, if, if you could if you could do what you did with a super just by, you know, winning the round, you could do that without a super. Then you don't really want to use it, right? So I would say if it's a really close game, then personally, I would try to see if I have like a sniper on my team. I would try to see if we can get a pick first. And if he goes down, if the sniper goes down, let's say to me, for instance, let's say I go down, mm -hmm. um, I might have um, one of the people or one of the people I'm running with pop their super and try to go get some kills while the other guy comes and gets my res. And then, then we kind of just go in all together. Um, or depending on the super two, you could just open it at the start of the round. Um, kind of depends on the team you're playing. Um, but I would say the one time like you never really want to pop a super is if like, oh, in like a 1v3 situation, unless, unless it's like a, like a, like a four four game or you know a right game, you know, it's match you point to, yeah. or something like that for the for the most part if you're playing a good team they're probably just gonna kill you I agree <laughs> like, with yeah, that, totally. yeah yeah i would i would never pop in a 1v3 situation um unless you're like you know just like a god player you're just yeah like, or like you're you know? about to go to yeah. orbit if you lose you're like and it's a, you yeah, might exactly. as well one yeah, thing exactly. you said that i think is actually really important i want to uh, make a note of because i was actually going to bring it up to you is one way you can use your super really effectively sometimes, and it's something I think a lot of new players don't think about, you can actually use it uh, to go get a res because you pop it and people will like freak out about <laughs> your super. You know, they'll yeah, try to run yeah, away yeah, from yeah, you. Exactly, and the, yeah. You can often use that to get either one or two of your teammates up um, you know, and, and potentially turn the entire round. And it's like, you don't even have to get a kill with it necessarily. You can kind of re use it to reset the entire engagement uh, because they mm -hmm. run away from you. It's, it's really a powerful thing that... I think a lot of good players do and i think a lot of newer players don't even think about using it that way because they're they're always trying to get maximum amount of kills with their super but yeah oh. exactly yeah yeah the biggest thing about honestly about supers like is the fact that it's like you know it's a distraction and people like freak out so like for the most part you know especially with these new stasis supers like even if you are like a crazy good player and have a lot of experience in the crucible you'll probably be like like you know like oh damn we have a we have a glacial titan running at us. Like we should probably get out of there. <laughs> yes. you know? um, Very hard to so, duel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, 
yeah, I think having having like the the distraction side of the super is like a super important aspect that a lot of people you know don't really utilize is they just kind of get try to get kills with it. Don't and don't get me wrong, kills are important and you can definitely get you know a lot of kills um, with supers. But at the same time, um, kind of just running as a team with a super or you know you know uh, flanking you know on the other opposite side of a super and just pinching like that's a really good tactic. I do that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, a lot of supers are more than just one person, you know, clutching up and winning the round. A lot of it is a whole team, you know, and so yeah, I think it's really important is to realize that you can use them more for just kills. You can kind of use them to really control the map, especially, especially with this, um, this new, uh, the new St Hunter Stasis super is, yeah, personally, like we were saying earlier, it's honestly not like our favorite super, but like at the same time, it has some crazy map control, right? Oh, with yeah. The tornado. So like, it, like, if you think about it, if let's say the round's going super long, um, you can literally just throw it on the cap point, and then <laughs> yeah. you pretty much have cap point because like it's just gonna sit there spinning for like what I think it's like twenty seconds or something like that. Yeah, like you know, so th that's a really good tactic to do. And then even if it like chases them off, like you know they're not gonna push from. Let's say it goes towards a certain doorway. You know that's where they ran. You know they're not gonna push from that doorway because that's where you know they're at. Yeah, um, I, where the tornado's <laughs> at. Yeah, I remember specifically last weekend I had that exact situation where basically uh, like I had a round. I was pretty sure I could have won it. But what happened is some dude threw uh, this uh, hunter super right in this like doorway on Jav, and like it blocked off my ability to go get the reses that I really wanted to go get, and mm -hmm. so it forced me to rotate all around the entire map, and like completely messed up my plan of like how I wanted to move, and it basically won them the round, even though it didn't actually deal a single tick of damage, but it just it completely blocked the lane that I wanted to play in, and uh, it was like in the pipes area, and so it's just. It was really interesting to me. That was the first time I had like come across that where I was like completely zoned off, even though it didn't deal any damage or freeze me. I just couldn't play like the, the yeah, part exactly. of the map that I wanted to play where the res is. Yeah, were. it's annoying. It's, it's, if you think about it, it's kind of like uh, kind of like Valorant with like an omen and you know, <laughs> like the smokes or anything like that. You know, kind of just using the smokes and kind of kind of controlling the map, if you will. Uh, yeah, that's kind of how I how I thought of it when I first used it. I was like, oh damn, like it's just like that. You know, so that's actually um, a really know. good way to think of it. Yeah, that's a mm -hmm. there's a lot of I feel like that's one thing more for people who play any other like tactical shooters like Valorant or CS or whatever. You th when you think of uh, games like that, there's a lot of like utility in the you know, utility meaning like grenades and uh, abilities like that that uh, are used really for like map control. And it's something that I don't think that a lot of Destiny players who don't have experience in those games really think about. But it's such a huge, like, I mean, the basis of most of those tactical shooters is all about, like, map and situation control and, like, fighting for every little square inch of space to, like, and w when you watch top tier teams duel each other, they'll literally use, like, all these, like, flashbangs and smoke grenades and stuff yeah. just to, like, fight for one little angle that they want to control on the map. And Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a huge, like, concept that I think that a lot of players who... Maybe Destiny is their first big FPS game. They just haven't really come across that. And so it's an interesting like thing to think about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it, it's it's really cool because like, you know, as, as annoying stasis can be, uh, as annoying as stasis can be, you know, um, it did add a lot of, I guess, some new abilities that we haven't really seen in Destiny. So another one of those big ones is the Glacial Nade, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, right now, it's a lot of people use it for shatter diving and that kind of stuff and getting kills with it. You can actually use it for, like, cover and, like, you know, yeah. like plugging up a, uh, you know, a doorway or, you know, blocking a lane so you can get the res and that kind of stuff. So I've definitely started to really utilize that a lot, especially this past weekend. Um, you know, we're on something like Jav, and you know they're going to be sniping from, like, like Diamond Door or something like that. Literally just throwing your, your stasis grenade, and they can't do anything. And I guess they could smash it, you know, and they can... There's a lot of different ways they can... But at the same time, that kind of takes time to do. You yeah. Know, maybe you, that allows the opponent to get an angle on you and stuff like that. Well, it so, definitely interrupts yeah, the yeah. flow of whatever is going on at that yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. The other exactly. thing that I really like to do with it, I was actually the very first way that I started using it, like kind of other than just as a grenade when it first came out, was to make like little ledges to snipe from. Mm -hmm. It's almost like being a top tree dawn blade. You can yeah, yeah. throw it on all these creative little angles and create these off angles that just normally don't exist. And so you can get some mm -hmm. cool sniper um, you know, picks from it. It's pretty fun. Yeah, I feel like that might be the next big thing. I haven't really dabbled too much in it, but like I remember like I was playing on Bannerfall, like some dude hit some crazy snipe on me. I was like, where the hell is this guy? I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I saw the kill feed. I was like, oh my That's god. Yeah, so I was, he was literally just sitting on top of like a yeah. stasis ledge. I was like, what? I'm actually excited like, for them to hopefully get nerfed so I can use them that way more. Because I feel like right now it's like <laughs> yeah. kind of a waste because it's like a free super almost every time you throw a grenade and smash is, it. Yeah. But and it's I like, think, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think once it does get nerfed, honestly, I think Titan Stasis is probably going to be the next big thing. 
because I, I don't know if you played it that much i I, I usually never play Titan, and I really enjoy it. Like the slide on it just feels oh, yeah. really good. The so I think if I'm gonna, crazy yeah, yeah. Good. yeah, yeah. If I'm gonna shotgun, I think I'm probably gonna play Stasis mm -hmm. Titan. If if uh, the Hunter Hunter gets nerfed, I'm curious to see but, what um, it, yeah what how they go about. Because the other thing about Hunter that I feel like I haven't explored as much as I would like to, just because the shatter combo is so strong, is the the slowing and the ability you know dodging and throwing the shurikens and all that and like the running the fragment that creates the additional slow duration mm -hmm. i feel like a lot of that like it's a play style that i've wanted to try more but i just when i'm playing you know when i'm playing in a situation like trials where i really need to win yeah and yeah. it's like it's hard it's hard to you know give it's away a, not, a free yeah. chatter big exactly dive. especially when the other team is doing it too it's kind of like yeah, it's hard it's not to be like, like a stasis yeah. arms race <laughs> it's, yeah, it literally it's like who has the higher discipline you know yeah it's, like, uh, it's crazy yeah, no. but um, and there's a, there's yeah. a lot of different ways you can like uh you can get grenades back super fast too um like i think i i still like my discipline super low just because I've been, you know, using my warlock and top tier mm -hmm. on sniping for trials carries, you know, like for like eight months straight. So like my, uh, I used to main hunter, but then once they came out with top tree down, that's when I made the switch. Um, and so my armor on my hunter hasn't been that best or hasn't been the, the best it could be. So I only have like three discipline on the build I have now, but I still get like a grenade, like every round. Oh yeah. Um, because you can just run like the, the shards or the whisper. That's, shards the, fragment. that's the thing. If you yeah. run like high, so I, I usually run like, I don't know, seven or eight discipline plus the shards. Plus I also have double, double bomber on yeah, every bomber dodge. Crazy. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, if you do all that, it's like, even without something like frosties, which also improves even more, like just with a regular build, like you can get it back so consistently like it's, yeah, exactly. it's crazy yeah. how frequently you can get it back and then even you yep. can shatter like a lot of people don't i guess or maybe don't realize oh, yeah, yeah. you can shatter yeah, yeah. other people's crystals to get your to proc that grenade yeah, regeneration thing. so you can get your own grenade back faster yeah it's crazy man yeah, yeah. It, it, i like how it synergizes really well i just wish the ability wasn't as crazy yeah i just wish it wasn't a little <laughs> nuclear bomb that blew up yeah, everyone literally, nearby man. literally yeah that's funny like it's crazy like there's been so many rounds where i've just like either 1v3 or just like team wiped people mm -hmm. even with like just because of a just because of the grenade yeah you know? like it's it's crazy <laughs> one of the things i kind of want to still try uh before it gets nerfed is to like do a card with friends where we only use abilities the entire time mm -hmm. and see if we can go flawless with abilities only i feel yeah. like it would be very doable with with the yeah, right build would be. <laughs> yeah i mean you if you literally like have you know the max discipline with bomber and mm -hmm. then you know also shards like just just off the hundred grenade alone, you could get a grenade like every like what twenty thirty yeah. seconds, maybe <laughs> faster. So, you yeah. know, so it's just like pretty yeah. much guaranteed kill, it's you know, you have to do it. Yeah. Uh, so one of the other things I wanted to talk about related to trials and team play and stuff is sort of like the whole like I feel like okay. People talk about like team shotting and like, you know, stuff like that, but I feel like not many people have gone in depth on like explaining like to new players what does that actually mean? What is it like to um, like slide angles together to your team. It's like the types of things that like really good players do, but I feel like not that many people really explain what that means to like newer players. Um, so can we just like talk about that for a little bit? For example, like yeah, sure. one of the things that like I will always like try to coordinate with my friends when I'm playing is like, we'll like literally call out like three, two, one, slide this lane together so that we're, mm -hmm. we're synchronized in peaking the angle at the same time. So that instead of just like, I don't have to hit all of my shots and I have to hand like, land like one to two shots and my friend has to like land one to two shots and we get a kill as opposed to yeah. like you know just it basically cuts down the time to kill drastically because there's more than one person you know firing at the enemy yeah yeah so um so this is why this is where you know talking about lanes and all that kind of stuff really is important and like knowing the map because if you know where people are going to peek out right um that's and then you are with your team and you're able to do these three they're pretty much called like three two one -ing, or like three two ones where people will kind of run as a team and they'll count down, you know, three, two, one, and they'll just like slide out and peek a lane together. Mm -hmm. um, if you're able to do that and you're able to really know where, you know, either one person or even a team is able to, is where they're going to peek, you know, that is, it's just going to be killer, especially with something like 120s right now. Like they're just so strong. They will like literally delete someone, you know, just from like, if, if all of you just land one shot pretty much, yep. cause uh, you, you know, you're pretty much just going to kill them. Exactly. So it, it's really, really strong. And that's where splitting off in some, in a game with like trials can be really, really detrimental. You know, if you split off on your own and go do your own thing and you're like, Oh, okay. I'm just going to go see if I can get a quick little pick, or maybe I'm going to try to, uh, you know, 
maybe like three tap someone with a hand cannon and then you know get the pick or whatever if you spin off on your own and then that team happens to be you know this happened to me a lot actually um this past weekend especially if you spin off on your own and that team happens to be just running together and they do three two on you your your team's at an immediate disadvantage yep. You know, yeah. you're at an immediate 2v3 because you, you definitely just got picked. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, the biggest thing with that is um, I think I can try to find some from some clips from this weekend. But, like, definitely, like, teams were um, on jab, especially. There's that main, you know, doorway on heavy, like, by divider. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if you're trying to peek that lane, looking outside towards the boxes um, on the right side, people will just, you know, go outside from their spawn and they'll just all be sitting there waiting for you. So, you know, if you try to slide out, maybe get a little angle or something like that, like you're pretty much dead, you know, if they're just, if they're already watching that angle. Um, and so and knowing where people will go and that kind of thing and knowing the main lanes uh, where people usually peak is going to be huge, especially for something like team shots. So, um, so yeah, three, two, one ing is like a really big and really popular, I guess, like method for a lot of people to use in something like trials where, um, you know, they all just kind of slide out at the same time and peek the same lane, and then it, it's pretty much an easy, an easy kill. And then also, what it does too is, let's say even the whole team is there, right? It, it causes a lot of confusion too, right? Because if you're behind cover and you and all of you slide out at the same time, you know, no one's gonna have their, you know, their reticle perfectly. Right, they're they're not ready for that. Yeah, that yeah. Coordinated so, peak a lot of times. Exactly, yeah. and so if they're just sitting there watching a lane. And then you you all slide out at the same time, and and then you know it, it, at the same time if it's a big lane you're not gonna uh, you're not gonna know where they are either you know but if you're if you're about to slide out onto something maybe like a doorway and they're all there then you know they're gonna be in the doorway you know mm -hmm. um so that you can already you know get ready to pre in there and they're they're gonna be you know confused and all jumbled because you know there's like three of you just popping out of nowhere you know and <laughs> stuff like that so um, yeah, that's, and that's yeah. a really big tactic too and then um, the same thing for me however like it, it kind of I guess it kind of varies when um like a good way to counter that is what i'm trying to say um like for me if, you, if you're a good player and you're able to snipe well or something like that what i will kind of do is i'll know where teams are gonna are gonna slide out in three two one so if i'm feeling like you know a, a little cheeky i might i might just kind of set up on the lane with a sniper and like adjust enough where they can't see me but if they slid in the lane then they could you know what i mean mm -hmm. so then as they're sliding i might just be able to get a pick off of a sniper yeah, then you or something like that you dawn blade movement to get right out of there you know? exactly yeah. yeah so that that's what's really good about top tier dawn or even hunter you know with the dodge mm -hmm. you can just kind of sit in the lane and then you know you could go for a quick little pick and just get <laughs> that's out that's like my you, favorite you thing on hunter yeah. i use that all the time i'll go for like a slide peek and then i'll dodge right mm -hmm. after i take the shot whether i hit it or not like i'm i'm out of there like i yeah, you know, yeah. it's like like, it's such a good that's one of the things i think that makes the uh, both dom top tree dawn and hunter so strong is just that evasive ability mm -hmm. I, and honestly dude even titans now too like yep. the slide yeah. on titan is crazy and like there's no like sprint build up you can just you know just a regular mm -hmm. slide is the is the crazy you know like 30 minute slider yeah. you know? so it's like it's crazy so yeah. a, lot, a lot of class what i really like is because the reason i didn't like to play titan for the longest time was because they felt so chunky they felt so slow compared to hunters and especially top two down yeah, same for me and then yeah and then now you have dunes uh dune marchers paired with the new stasis and they're they're pretty crazy you can go super fast mm -hmm. with the new melee too you know flying through the air so um yeah no they feel really good now so that's yeah. why i like them a lot but you well, know it's uh yeah it's important one of the things I wanted to also mention, uh, speaking of like our team shotting conversation, is um, with snipers. So a lot of uh, players, when I would play trials with them for the first time, I will often recommend them not to use a sniper. And the reason I say that is that a lot of times, people, especially newer players, have a habit of getting like very heavily like scoped in all the mm -hmm. time. And what yeah. happens is, unless they're like an insanely good shot, a lot of times they're not contributing on those team shots. And what will happen is they'll just be kind of sitting a little bit passively in the back somewhere they'll have their sniper out and like they're just not really part of the action and so it's like it's almost like playing a 2v3 then because it's like they're yeah no you know? exactly yeah, so, yeah that's no, like see. some tips i usually give people just like try to just play with your primary out because even if you hit one body shot like that alone can be enough to make your team win mm -hmm. a fight um where you just like they just need a little bit more damage yeah no especially like I think one of the biggest things that I always see, and this is this kind of goes for everyone, not just carries, but especially with carries, is a lot of people will they will try to snipe because maybe that's something you know they've always done. Maybe they're on controller and they're not like a crazy good shotgunner or something like that. Primary in this game is like I said earlier is so important. If you have a really good primary game, you could shut down majority of these these crazy snipers. You know all these apes. Like people will be like, oh, like I love stasis because it's a great way 
to counter shotgun aping, but you could do the same thing with a primary. <laughs> you yep. know, if you just kind of back up and just use your primary, it's a great way to counter shotgun apes and all that kind of stuff. So, um, even snipers, because like they they changed the way sniper flinch works, right? Or they at least they made it a little bit more you know prevalent or a little more you know yeah well especially the, kind of the lower now. aim assist it's like yeah uh, it's a little bit exactly you, snipers have to be a little bit more accurate which means that you've you know obviously there will still be infinite clips of like yeah. two tapping a sniper yeah, yeah. and getting domed that's gonna happen Dude, forever but. i have to show you like the, the <laughs> craziest clip there's two people like spraying me with a v-wing and like trials a couple months ago mm -hmm. and i just like just said Ah, uh, whatever. We'll just go for it. And like, I, I literally hit both the shots. And like, the dudes like <laughs> thought I was cheating. And I was like, dude, like, yeah. I, I totally understand. Just, like, <laughs> that's the new crazy. Sniper, yeah. Yeah. No. That's um. But, funny. but yeah. No. So, um. Yeah. No. So the primary is especially, especially important. And so that's why that's why the thing that sucks though is right for carries. You know, a lot of things what I'll tell the carries to do is I will go off on my own if I'm trying to go for a snipe or something like that. Um, but for the most part, just try to stay with whoever my partner is, whoever I'm running with, because if you kind of go off on your own and then you get picked, even if, even if you're not carrying, or even if you're not a carry, maybe you're just with your team. If you just go off on your own and let's say you're trying to snipe and then the other team knows you're off on your own and they just target you. It's like, and you don't hit a shot. Let's mm -hmm. say, you, you know, you, maybe you don't get a kill or whatever. Um, that, that's like an easy, pretty much an easy round, you know, for them, you know, cause then it's an, it's an immediate, uh, three V two, you know, yeah. cause you went down and it makes it significantly harder on your team. So. That's definitely one of the biggest things is making sure um, knowing when to snipe and knowing when to challenge lanes. But at the same time, you also have to know, you know, when to stick with your team and when to just do, use your primary and where sniping isn't really as important. Yeah, totally agree with that. Uh, so um, since we've been talking for like 45 minutes, I want to get into like a whole nother topic. But I think maybe what we'll do is for next time, we'll do like a part two, because I one of the topics I want to talk to you also about is that you made a big transition from uh, console to PC and also mm -hmm. learning mouse and keyboard in less than a year and being like a really good player on it. So I think that would be like a really good topic. Maybe we can do like a part two sometime that we could talk about. Yeah, that. dude, hundred so percent. If people are that, into yeah. it, leave a comment, let us know that's something you'd like to hear more about. Cause I'm actually really curious myself cause I, I've been playing, you know, mouse and keyboard for like literally 20 plus years. So I, it's like, it's like second nature to me, but yeah. I'm always fascinated by people who move from one input device to the other and become really good with it because it's just you know it's something that i've had experience on both controller and mouse and keyboard for a long time so i haven't really had to deal with that so mm -hmm. i'm always interested to hear more about that yeah no for sure i, I definitely have a lot of tips because uh, there's a lot of stuff that i've like i, I kind of had to like i guess like perform well on it because i want to start streaming and i knew that i didn't really want to start streaming until I, I thought of myself as a good player and I knew that I, I wanted to make the switch to MK because it's just something I always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was kind of like I really had to like expedite the process um, if I really wanted to. And don't get me wrong, I wasn't like, you know, an insane player when I first started streaming or anything like that. I definitely got better over the months and months of me doing it. Um, but I was I was definitely able to learn a lot of tips and tricks along the way. So yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, awesome and help out. Cool. Well, dude, thank you so much for uh, doing this video with me. This is going to be really cool. I'm sure people yeah, are going to love no this. So, um, yeah, man. Where can people find you online? What's the best place to find your channels? Um, so the best thing for me is if you want to catch me live on Twitch, uh, my Twitch is literally just Lemur, L-E-M-U-R. That is me. I do a lot of trial scares on the weekend, and I do a lot of stuff um, quick play, survival-wise, doing a lot of different builds, maybe testing out some different guns uh, during the week. That's kind of what I do um, during the week. But on the weekend, I pretty much just do trials all weekend and try to do a lot of carries and help as many people out as I can. And then uh, I also do YouTube as well. And I really wanted to, I also, I really wanted, like I said earlier, I really wanted to start the, the YouTube grind uh, once Beyond Light came out. But then I had, I had a lot of complications with like grad school and stuff like that. So I wasn't really able to uh, really get grinding there. But I, however, I am planning to do some crazy videos pretty soon. So I, I have a lot of good ideas in mind. Awesome. I'm so, excited. I, like yeah, I man. said, I really enjoyed your Top Tree Dawn one. So I'm sure their other ones will be really good. Definitely worth checking out. Well, yeah, man. Yeah, thank you for having me on, dude. It was a lot of fun. I had a really good time talking about this. I always love, you know, giving tips and giving my own little two cents on yeah. anything Destiny related. So, you know, hope it was. Uh, hope you got a lot of good stuff, man. Absolutely, I'm excited. I think this will be a really good episode. People will really enjoy quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Cool. Absolutely. Awesome. Right, thank man. you, man. Appreciate it. Anytime, bro. What a fun talk! I wanted to again thank Lemur for taking the time to come onto my channel and share his knowledge with you. I have a part two of this video with Lemur coming out soon where we talk a little bit about the trials loot situation and suggest some different ways to fix it, so be sure to stay tuned for that one. 
If you liked this video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a thumbs up rating and also head over to Lemur's channel and leave a comment on his most recent video letting him know that you found him through this collaboration. If you're not yet subscribed to this channel, please be sure to do so. I have a ton of awesome videos coming your way soon and I can't wait to share them with you. I stream each week over on Twitch, you can catch me live at twitch.tv slash pattycakespc. We also have an amazing community discord with over 7,000 members. The link to join is discord.gg slash pattycakes. That's all for now, catch you guys next time.